For years, opposition parties have raised concerns over third-party spending during elections in this province. Others have called for Ontario to follow the federal lead and take corporate and union donations out of the funding mix. Finally, after allegations of improper fundraising practices last spring, Ontario's Liberal government has a bill before the House to reform election financing rules. Joining us now with the opposition party's views on whether the proposed law strikes the right balance, we welcome Randy Hillier, PC member for Lanark, Frontenac, Lennox and Addington, Catherine Fife, the NDP member for Kitchener-Waterloo, and Mike Schreiner, who's the leader of the Green Party of Ontario. I am happy to welcome the three of you back to TVO. Okay. We should say our producer, Mark Brosens, asked more than a dozen liberals to appear on the program and none was available. And so we are liberalists today, but we are happy that you are here. Let's go through, shall we? Sheldon, bring this up if you would. This is Bill 2, the Election Finance Statute Law Amendment Act. If passed, it would bar corporations and unions from making political donations. It would cap individual donations at $3,600 per year, and that would be split evenly amongst the parties, candidates, and riding associations. Currently, individuals can donate up to $33,000 plus per year. It would introduce a per-vote subsidy for political parties. Starting in 2017, the subsidy would be $2.71 per vote for the year, but that would decline to $2.21 per vote in 2020. Third-party organizations currently have no spending limit on their political advertising. Under this bill, they would be limited to $100,000 during an election campaign. Donations to party leadership candidates would be capped at $1,200 per individual. Currently, there is no limit. This is some of what's in the mix of the new bill, and I want to know what you guys think. Randy Hillier, start us off. Well, I think to start off with is just um, a reflection uh, uh, on what brought us here, uh, this cash-for-access scandal uh, where the Liberal Party was having significant expensive stakeholder fundraisers with people that are doing business with ministers, energy companies, uh, green energy companies. Um, the optics were tacky at best. Um, many people have used other terms, but it was people paying big money to gain access to people who could sign contracts. And apparently the Premier now agrees with you that the optics were yeah. lousy and she's put yeah. these new changes into place. So there's a number of, of good changes. Getting rid of corporate and union donations, mm -hmm. absolutely fine. But it hasn't dealt with um, the ministers dealing with the people that they're, dealing, that they're doing contracts with. Um, union and corporate money is out of it. However, personal contributions, they've been reduced, um, but there's still many lo loopholes left in the system. Okay, and hold I'm sure that we'll thought. talk about them. We'll look at loopholes. Catherine Fife, your initial take on this package? Yeah, no, as, as a member who traveled across the province uh, this summer, listening to the voices of Ontarians express their concern uh, with, the, with what they called an apparent conflict of interest. I mean, and, and actually they were supported by the integrity commissioner in his last uh, finding, is that when you have a minister who has directed stakeholders, uh, it be the electricity or infrastructure, and they're paying $5,000 a piece to sit just with you uh, in a room, that uh, that is very concerning, and so that and people express that uh, over the summer. So they're going to get rid of that. No, I mean not that's quite? no, no, they're not because the conflict of interest. We raised the issue of raising the bar on conflict of interest and having a stronger oversight over that for the integrity commissioner. Uh, that was not supported by the the Liberals. So it's true the limit will be reduced now to twelve hundred, uh, but you, there's still nothing to stop a minister. Um, from as the bill is constructed right now, uh, from having that meeting. Now the the uh, you know the attorney general has says there's more to come, but they had an uh, the chance to introduce a full bill that would address conflict of interest, which would address government advertising, which would address the fact that research, polling, and travel is still exempt from campaign expenses, for instance. So there, there's not only some loopholes, there's a side door and a back door. And it's frustrating as a member who, you know, invested a lot of time and energy and wanted to be respectful of the voices that we heard across the province and have a bill that reflected that. Mike Schreiner. Well, the bottom line is people want big money out of politics. And the bill as it's currently written still doesn't get big money out of politics. The fact that somebody can still donate $3,600 to a party and its associations, 
I don't know how many people have $3,600 to donate. Most don't. And the bill doesn't fully address the cash for access scandal that really led to this issue exploding. It's interesting, about six months ago, I was here and we were talking about this very issue. And I said, you know what, if people know what's going on, this issue is going to explode. And you had a former liberal cabinet minister who said, oh, no, you're making too much out of this. But uh, now that the information's come out, people are outraged. They want it fixed. They want big money out of politics. That former Liberal cabinet minister you're talking about has a name. I think you're talking about Greg Sorbera, who was on this program earlier this year, making that very point that campaigns cost money. And to shake the money out of the trees, if you don't like the rules we got right now, find some different rules. But they still need the money. Let's play that clip. Sheldon, please. When you were actually in the caucus of the government of Ontario, yeah. people in the caucus actually wanted to do this. Yep. And you said to them, what? I said, have you uh, gone completely crazy? If you want to transition to another system, uh, do it in a way that is fair to all parties, is timely, and to go back to the problem that I identified at first, deals with the problem that all political parties do not have the resources under the current system to do what they want to do. That's the point I want to pick up on, Mike, because his point was, Campaigning costs money. Absolutely. And if you're going to you know, lower limits or decline to allow unions or corporations to contribute, the money's got to come from somewhere. And you know, his argument was, find me a better way to raise the amount of money we need to run campaigns, and OK. Have you found a better way to raise the money to run campaigns? Well, I think a, the per vote allowance that's in the legislation is the right way to go. And, and if you think about it right now, we have a pay to play system. We actually fund political parties. It's through tax donation credits and reimbursements. And so if you have big money and deep pockets, you get access to politicians, and you get a tax receipt funded by taxpayers. The better way to go is what I call vote to play, which is you vote, and your vote directs up some money to political parties. Uh, and that is then open to everybody in Ontario. Everyone can participate in funding political parties. That's a much better way to go. It's more democratic, it's more fair, it puts all voters on a level playing field. Uh, one of the provisions that we think is going to be introduced into the bill, we haven't seen it yet, is actually banning participation of political candidates, MPPs, anyone okay. in any fundraiser. Hold off on that. I'm okay. going to get to that later. We should later. get to that, because that actually is going way too far in the other direction. I understand. I'm going to get to that later. But it, let me pick up on the angle that I think the NDP would be concerned about, which is you obviously depend on unions across this province for resources, for money, people power, and so on. Is it a problem for the NDP if you ban union donations? Well, listen, we, we supported a full ban on union and corporate donations. And we welcome, actually, a shift in the culture around talking about the impact that money has on politics. Uh, and, you know, you know, if you look at down in the States, uh, Bernie Sanders raised $27 per person. I mean, people, you know, recognized that they wanted to support him as a candidate. And even though they didn't have a lot of money, they... they they donate it. And that's some, that's, there's a big difference between these Toronto fundraisers and the fundraisers we have in our riding association. When someone comes to my you know, spaghetti dinner at the Legion, it's really a vote of confidence. They're saying, you know what, I want to support you. I like the work you're doing, $20, $50, what have you. Um, and I think that I think when we, when we moved forward into this process, we were supposed to have the elector at the centre. Uh, and those electors had ge genuine concerns about the impact that money had on policy and on legislation and that's and they were very clear about that they felt that their interests were coming second to those who could buy influence okay but randy so. let me get you to speak to sorbera's point which is campaigns cost money if you don't like the current rules come up with different rules are these any better um they are somewhat better mm -hmm. but there's still significant problems with it and and listen there is a model uh, the federal uh, political parties have been operating under a model without union and corporate donations, yep. with restrictions on lobbyists, with restrictions on um, soliciting funds from stakeholders by ministers. They have the model... But no that, per vote that, subsidy, I don't think. No per vote subsidy. And actually, the federal parties are raising more money now under that model mm -hmm. than what they did previously. So there is a model, it does work, and it also has, nobody has raised any concerns or any 
uh, allegations of improprietary, uh, improper, improper um, activities. Mm -hmm. There's no scandal going on. There hasn't been anything at the federal level. So why didn't we model this legislation after a model that we know works and that has cleaned up politics at the federal level? I don't well? know the answer to that, but my hunch is, and again, this is just based on what I'm seeing, it looks like Premier Wynne wants to go further than that. And this gets to what Mike was talking about a second ago, the notion that an MPP or a candidate for office won't even, under the new rules possibly, be able to show up at their own barbecue. I just want to yeah. challenge that. I mean, yeah. I really do not feel that this is about the Premier, you know, wanting to raise the bar to a higher ethical level. I think that this is a, the case of uh, the Liberal government getting caught and then trying to respond in a, from a public relations perspective. Because really, all that we have, if they were serious about these transformative and uh, you know, monumental changes to uh, banning all MPPs from fundraising, they would have included it in the bill. It is currently not in the bill. All we have right now is a press release from Yasser Nakvi, mm -hmm. which he dropped down into the uh, clause by clause when we were drafting the bill itself, uh, which was incredibly disrespectful to the people of the province who actually came out and, and registered their concerns. So we actually don't even know um, how serious this government is about getting uh, big money out of politics. But we do know that the bill before us is still flawed. Right, it still allows see, excessive government advertising as well. This is not raising the bar. What she's trying to do is take the dirty laundry that was so clear from their activities and make everybody else wear that dirty laundry. <laughs> That's what she's doing. Uh, candidates uh, uh, who have maybe even independent candidates who have no political party affiliation are going to be captured under the same manner as a, a cabinet minister in her cabinet for fundraising. Uh, will be prevented from attending, that's what we're told, from even attending any fundraiser. Now, uh, where this will all go, um, I don't know. It's been an abusive process without a, without a doubt, uh, a parliamentary process. Uh, making us vote on a bill that is incomplete and doesn't have its com entire text present. Okay, let me Can go I to Mike Schreiner on that. So yeah. first of all, I want to correct the record on how the federal government did it. When they did ban corporate and union donations, there was for a period of time a per vote allowance for political parties to help with the transition. Mm -hmm. um, I Harper think that was smart. That. Harper got rid of it. It was phased, I, it was yeah. phased out. I, I disagree with completely phasing it out, but we should be clear that they did that. Mm -hmm. The point I'd like to make about this whole banning MPPs and candidates and others from fundraisers, there's a simple solution to this just lower the donation limits down to a level that makes sense for people. In Quebec, the limit's $100. Some people suggest that maybe that's too low. We, the Green Party's been suggesting a $300 limit. Because the bottom line is, is even if you ban MPPs and, and candidates and cabinet ministers, that doesn't prevent staff from doing fundraisers. And part of what we've seen with these cash for access events with the Liberals, a lot of it's being organized by political staff even, and they're the ones out soliciting the donations. So if you can still give up to $3,600, and let's say you get 20 people from your company donating, that's over $70,000. Even if it's just with a staff person, that still sounds like cash for access for me. But, so we need to lower the donation in, limits. In context, I'll, I'll say this one thing. Um, when a plumbing contractor comes to my barbecue, and whether he uh, gives me $50 for my campaign or $500 or the maximum of $1,200, he's not or she is not looking for a plumbing contract at Queen's Park from me. <laughs> um, when, it, when those contractors or those businesses go and meet a minister of the crown in a quiet place for $10,000, there is a different expectation in play. Can I ask and you a question about that? And I think there needs to be a public inquiry to see just what happened. I hear what you're saying about that. The other side would say, you can't point to a single piece of evidence which says, because this business contributed this amount of money to this cabinet minister, they therefore got a positive decision as a result. Well, we know that 99% of uh, the people who got large renewable projects, uh, who contributed $1.3 million, um, they did get large renewable uh, energy contracts. Because, we they, know that. because so, they contributed? 
Well, we know there's a correlation there. How do I you, think, wait a sec, how do you know that? Well, because the people who went to those fundraisers were the ones who got the contract. But you don't know that that's why they got no, the contract. And that's why we really needed not a piece of legislation done up on a napkin by, by the Premier. We need, and I think we still need, a public inquiry to see what actually went on. We've heard from many of the people, um, Steve, that were very upset and, and the words that they've used are things like uh, they were felt like they were obligated, that they were being shaken down, that they needed to go there if they wanted any possibility of getting those contracts. They needed to pony up the cash, yeah, and, then, and this is a, a, nothing but a shakedown from the appearance. Let's take this back to you know the people actually, because you know if you look at the Hydro One sell-off, the privatization of Hydro One, uh, which which partial uh, they would say, well uh, they would also say they're broadening the ownership, but you don't get more broader than the entire province and the people of the province owning Hydro One. So uh, you're right. So now it's down to uh, sixty percent or something, um, but if. You know, what, what we heard is that for those six bankers to meet with the Minister of Energy, those, uh, those financial institutions who have a direct connection to the sell-off of Hydro One, I, I mean, and then they were, they were reported to actually make $65.6 .6 million in financial transactions that were affiliated with that. That was reported. It is documented. Yeah, but Ed, uh, you know what Ed Clark says, though. Ed well, Clark, the privatization Ed Clark, Ed Clark should not be at Queen's Park advising the Premier of this province. We shouldn't have a privatization on, let's just guru well, but let's selling off is. the province he's assets. A, he's a former banker who's working for a dollar a year, giving the Premier advice. It's not his decision, it's her decision. And he yeah, says, that's a good point. He says it's that, her, that it's her decision. It is her decision. She's the Premier. He's not elected. She is. And he says that he has been tough on his former colleagues and they haven't got nearly the kinds of fees out of these privatizations that previous ones have demonstrated. Oh, well, oh, cry so me so a river. I mean, just, seriously. I'm just, just, you know I'm just you know, putting that out there. You know who's losing is the people of this province. And and actually, when and the, and the confidence in our democracy, which actually does cost all of us as politicians who try to enter into this uh, this very conflict-oriented arena to try to actually work for people. Oh. And, Bankers and, and, know what okay. a return on investment oh, is. But let me go to Mike They have a $10,000 night, and they get $66 million. I want, a good I, return. I, I want to go to Mike Schreiner on this, because I think this point it's important to make. There's no liberal here uh, to make this point, and I'm not defending them. I'm only going to put it to you. Show me a piece of evidence that says because business person X gave X amount of dollars to cabinet minister Y, they therefore got a positive disposition of their issue. Well, and so unless we had some sort of you know secret recording device happening at these private hundred thousand dollar cash for access events, we don't know that. So it's just been, But it's been documented in by numerous like Globe and Mail, Toronto Star, CBC, the correlation between donations and later contracts and what have you. But the bottom line is regardless if it was a tit for tat quid pro quo, mm -hmm. the appearance of it undermines confidence in our democracy. It breeds cynicism. It looks like money buys access to power. So you're happy to and, see that go. And so that just needs to go. Because, I mean, think about it. I mean, you know, politicians are about as well liked as used car salesmen now. And part of it is if people see them, maybe they're more like than politicians now. People, part of it, it's because of the corrosive influence of big money in politics. We need to get it out. That's why we need to lower donation limits to a level that's ex that seems reasonable to most people in this province. Okay. Can and we the amendments to the privacy to the Integrity Act, and, and we, there was a, much discussion about this during the committee, the, uh, where the Integrity Commission themselves uh, said that they were handcuffed, and uh, we needed amendments to the Members Integrity Act to help defeat or or prevent the appearance of conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. um, you know, amendments are required. This bill does not address those deficiencies in the Members' Integrity Act. And he said a reasonable person could yeah. conclude yeah. that there was a perception of a conflict of interest. Absolutely. If you're a minister and you have six people and they paid a lot of money and, and you got a contract contracts. on the table, mm -hmm. they're not there to listen to your uh, dinner party banter. Yeah. They, they're there because... And, and also, uh, another important piece would be these people couldn't meet with them outside business hours. So ministers mm -hmm. could not... You know. So if you're a contractor, if you're a stakeholder, you have the right to go and meet with the minister, absolutely. Absolutely. Meet during uh, business hours at Queen's Park. Sheldon, I'm bouncing around a little bit here because Catherine, having raised this, I think it makes sense here to go to this question at the bottom of page four, which is, is there a connection in your mind between the Liberals 
this week deciding not to sign any more green energy contracts and this stricter fundraising bill. Absolutely. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And and really What's the this connection? is well th this is this is just purely liberal politics. This is a party that has re finally has the scandals uh, have come to home to roost. But more importantly, every month someone gets their electricity bill. And so they may not understand a billion dollars in orange or e-health or gas plants, but they understand that their bill doubled uh, for no good reason. And so finally, uh, after a lot of pressure actually from opposition parties, that this premier has recognized that this is, she calls it a pocketbook issue. We, uh, we call it basically, uh, it is an ethical issue because there's a connection with the energy policy and the auditor general will back me up on this. It's not just me. She has said that there's a direct cor correlation between this government using politics over evidence-based decision-making and how they've determined energy policy in okay. the province of Ontario. Mike, let me get you, first of all, let's establish for the record, you don't like the decision. You wish the government were investing more in renewables and you don't like this decision, but that's a different issue for a different day. Well, I'm fine with what, that, sure. <laughs> what, 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 I'm, what I'm trying to find out is, well, I'll even put it this way. I've had somebody tell me that the Liberals canceled any future green energy contracts because companies, these companies, can't donate money to them anymore, so they don't therefore need to kiss up to them anymore. Is that something you've heard? I haven't heard that. I think this is more of a public relations exercise around the fact that people are outraged about electricity prices going up. And if we want to get into donations, let's talk about what the nuclear industry donates to political parties as well, just to put that on the table. But for me, the issue really is here is let's not deflect away from the real scandal here, which is cash for access events and the fact that we need legislation that fixes the fundraising system in Ontario. We need to lower donation limits. We need to lower spending limits. We need to have stronger conflict of interest um, uh, guidelines. We need to have stronger government advertising guidelines. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I fully support restricting third-party advertising, but why not apply it to the government's own partisan advertising? So for me, let's focus on how do we fix this bill to get big money out of politics. Okay, I, I get that, but I want to follow up, Mike, because I, I, I want to know if you believe there is any connection between the cancelling of any future green energy contracts between the province of Ontario and solar and or wind power manufacturers and the fact that these companies are no longer going to be able to donate to the Liberal Party of Ontario. Well, you'll have to ask the Liberals that, but I can tell you under the current legislation, an individual shareholder or president of the company as an individual could still donate $3,600 to the Liberal Party. And that's too and much. And that's too much. In your view. Okay. Randy, I want, to, uh, I want to ask you about third party advertising here. We usually see before, what is it, six to 12 months before every election campaign, there's a group called Working Families, which is a... I've heard of them. <laughs> I bet you have. They're a kind of a melange of uh, private sector unions Most, and... Mostly public sector and the building trades unions. Yes, and the building trades, uh, who come together for the pur mostly for the purpose of, of um, destroying your party, if yeah. I may put it that bluntly. There's going to be some stricter limits on what they're going to be able to do going forward. They're not happy about it. They aren't. What do you think about it? I think we've gone uh, significant uh, strides in the right direction on that. Um, there's, there's restrictions on uh, how much they can spend during the writ period, as well as uh, prior to the writ period. There's also uh, improvements in preventing coordination and collusion between political parties and uh, ostensibly um, um, third parties. Are you alleging that's taken place in the past? Oh, I, I think uh, coordination, without a doubt. Uh, there's been court not cases. Supposed to do there, hasn't been, um, there hasn't been any successful cases on the collusion, but mm -hmm. collusion is a very high threshold to, to prove out uh, beyond a reasonable doubt in our um, uh, law courts. However, we have reduced that threshold to coordination. Mm -hmm. And listen, uh, when you have people uh, who are senior Liberal Party um, staffers or um, like Don Guy and people who do significant polling with the Liberal Party who are also coordinating uh, and working for the um, working families, mm -hmm. um, there is a, an appearance of a conflict or an appearance of coordination. So we've gone along a step in, in the right direction okay. here, I believe. Me, but let me but ask I think Catherine it's important. This. Yeah. The LRP that was just suspended. LRP? The uh, large renewable pro okay. uh, projects. 
it's been suspended. It has been cancelled. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think you're absolutely correct. What, what you're hearing is there is a direct connection between the Liberal Party not being able to squeeze any more money out of that industry under this bill, uh, ending corporate and union donation, donations. There was no need for them to go back. There's no more money in that well for them. So that's why the LRP2 has been suspended. We'll see what happens with this legislation, where it actually ends up. Um, and when we do, then we'll see if the LRP2 will come back. Okay. So I want to talk about third party third as party well, because, because this actually was a significant issue that we heard across the province. And, and even the electoral officer mentioned, so issue-based advocacy. Uh, uh, the, the government wants to put limits on that. They want to limit the advertising. That's $100,000 during an election period. So if you had a group like Fix Our Schools, for instance, which is a, which is a local group in, in GTA, uh, they've uh, done a very good job of mobilizing. It's a grassroots organization. They have legitimate concerns about the state of our education system and the, the infrastructure of our schools. Uh, they will be severely limited if Bill 2 goes forward as it is in uh, taking out an ad, a half-page ad in you know, Now Magazine or the Toronto Star uh, will totally blow their entire budget. And so we had this really important principal debate at this committee about respecting the voices of Ontarians and their right to be engaged in the electoral process, their right to put forward their issues. And uh, really, the, for the concern is still there for us. Well, that's it what working really families is. would say, though. Working families would say, we're just a group of Ontarians who are pooling our resources in order to prevent this guy's party from forming government. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, What's wrong with there, that? there is a scale here as, as well, right? I mean, and but the, the autism group, for instance, they came and they spoke as well, and they said, you know, please ensure sure that our voices can still go forward. And, and that issue based, uh, the electoral officer said it's like a line in the sand. And for whenever it's going to be convenient for, for any government, but in this case, the Liberal government, who in turn also has the advantage of being able to spend money uh, through government advertising. And the Auditor General was so strong in her presentation to us. She basically said her oversight over government advertising is a joke. And that's a direct quote, because the Government Advertising Act has been watered down to almost nothing. So we are seeing paid advertisement with a liberal spin on it, paid by the citizens of this of this province, which adds insult to injury when you are also limiting the voices of advocacy groups who have legitimate concerns and have the right to engage in the political process. Was it not the Dalton McGuinty government which passed that law in the first place, saying yeah. trying to take the partisanship out of yeah. advertising? My Absolutely. Goodness. And we so I guess the win yeah the Wynn government's taking a page out of the Harper government at this point when it comes to partisan advertising, and we think it's wrong and the. The previous restrictions should be put back on it. I think the issue with third party advertising is really is around what are the limits of spending limits? And let's make sure we have the limits at a reasonable rate that allows grassroots citizens organizations to speak out, talk about the issues they care about, but not have it scaled up so much that they have undue influence and it could be seen as potentially a uh, corporate or union donation to a political party. So it's finding the right balance in terms of what the spending limits are. Just because yeah. we don't like to get sued here, we should point out Working Families Coalition is completely legal. Absolutely. The, it, it, I mean, they found an, an interesting little loophole in the law that allowed, that allowed them in the past to contribute considerable sums of money to help defeat you and, and, I, and I just would say working families would say you know they brought forward issues I mean when when you know when Tim Hudak threatened to cut a hundred thousand jobs or or when you know we're going to use prisoners on chain games those were legitimate concerns that were brought <laughs> forward by that by that group <laughs> and this is this is the important part of the debate and and I think for the most part uh, the committee members at the very beginning thought we were going to we were actually going to be engaged in an honest and, and meaningful process. And even David Reevely from the Ottawa Citizen came up to me after the Ottawa Citizen, and he goes, it sounds like you guys are really trying to figure this out. Well, we were until, until the oh, premier God. refused to outright ban cash for access, and we pushed her on it. And then we get a press release uh, during the committee saying, all MPPs can no longer fundraise. So these are the games. The Liberals have turned it into a game, and, and our democracy is not stronger because of it. I, I think it's important. We have made some important steps on the third-party advertising. Uh, I share Catherine's concerns as well. Did we get it right on uh, issues advocacy? And, and I think, Steve, to uh, compare the parents of autistic children and their campaign for seeking uh, advocacy and improvements with uh, the working families is, 
is the same faulty comparison as comparing a independent nominee or candidate with a member of the executive, a cabinet minister. There's the, the, the There's no comparison. comparison. No comparison. Gotcha. And, and we need to get that issues advocacy right, because I think you will recognize I'm a big believer in, um, in people speaking out in, uh, on their own and not just requiring political parties to do it for them. With time running out here, I want to put one more thing on the table. Our producer extraordinaire, Mark Brosens, crunched some of the numbers on what your parties would be receiving going forward as a per vote subsidy once that kicks in in, uh, well, I guess that's next year. And again, it depends on how well you did the previous time. So the Liberals, in time for the next election, would earn themselves $5 million from the per vote subsidy. The Conservatives, about $4 million. The NDP, just over $3 million. And the Greens are down there at 630000 plus. Uh, Mike Schreiner, is that enough money to run a campaign? Well, you know what, if we lowered the spending limits, which is what something the Green Party's been advocating for, if we had them at the same level that Quebec requires, that would take about a million dollars out of what parties could spend. And that just takes some of the pressure off. And I think actually the public would probably like it because we'd probably see fewer of these attack ads that people seem to complain about all the time. So that, that's one element. And the one thing I've told people, you know, some people have said, oh, well, the Greens, you're pushing for a per vote allowance because you would benefit. Well, by those numbers, actually, we would get the lowest amount of money. The reason I think the per vote allowance is important is based on the democratic principle that every, every individual, vote every voter, yeah. it should count and they should participate in the system. And this is an opportunity for their vote to direct funding to the political party they want to support. Three million dollars going to the NDP would certainly take a lot of the pressure off from shaking yeah. the trees, right? I think that we're sort of aligned, to, you know, uh, pr you know, every vote does count. And so on that principal position, well, we're, I think we'll, 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 we'll stay there. But your question is, is that enough money to run a, a campaign? Well, when you uh, incorporate the research, the polling, and the travel expenses that are still off the books, mm -hmm. that the Liberals kept part of Bill 2, uh, then it, those numbers mean nothing because the Liberals have been aggressively fundraising and using these cash for access fundraisers. And uh, by some counts, they have almost $19.6 million in the bank. And I can guarantee you the NDP does not have that. So what the system will do is that they will still have a lot of money and they have government advertising on their side. And this concept of leveling the playing field and bringing a principled position to uh, Bill mm -hmm. 2 uh, has not actually been a success. Randy, I'm down to my last minute here. The, the, the new bill is not yet law, which means we're still operating under the old Wild Wild West principles. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I can tell you, I know this, all the parties right now, but in particular the Liberals and the Conservatives, are out there shaking the trees like crazy for money. Sure. Your leader's doing tons of events, as you know, trying to. The Liberals yeah. are still cabinet ministers meeting all sorts of people. Uh, what do you think is going on out there right now? Well, listen, the, the, the law will be changing in some fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, we don't exactly know, as we've talked about, the amendments uh, that will broaden the scope of the bill uh, aren't even uh, textualized yet. We, mm -hmm. we can't examine them. Um, so everybody is uh, looking to pay off debts. Uh, everybody's looking to um, use whatever laws are available today. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the problems that we had right from the get-go. The Liberals, from what, we've, what we understand, they weren't breaking any laws. Uh, the Integrity Commissioner said, sure, it looks like... You know, looks bad, but not looks illegal. Bad, but, but the laws pr actually mm -hmm. prevent the integrity commissioner from bringing in. Okay. But Thank I you. think it's important on this per vote subsidy. What's important here, this is going to entrench the status quo. And the other thing that, uh, in my view, it funds the central political parties, but it has no mechanisms to fund local campaigns. Huh. So uh, big disadvantage for I individual local campaigns. They're restricted on all avenues for raising money and have no uh, no other means and the central parties collect that okay. two dollars thirty one cents. Give me the hook in the control room. Out of time, but check out Quebec's election laws for some wa ways to get around that. Yeah. That's what I would end with. Gotcha. Let the debate continue. We shouldn't have to get around the law. Can I thank Randy Hillier, <laughs> Lannard Frontenac, Lennox and Addington, PC MPP for coming on the program along with Catherine Fife, the NDP member for Kitchener Waterloo and Mike Schreiner who wants to be a Green member from somewhere next time round. Thanks everybody. Always a been pleasure. A pleasure. Always you. a pleasure. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.